What's going on, y'all? So listen. I know, I know, y'all was like, bitch, what a video at. A bitch had shit to do yesterday, wasn't in a house. And then when I came in, I thought I was going to do the video, but bitch, I went to sleep, okay? It is what it is. You don't need to put in the comments, girl, I was wondering where you was at. Y'all be acting like a bitch dead or something. No, I just took a day off. Like, calm down. I, I'm, I'm allowed to do that. I'm human. You know, bitch be having other shit to do. But anyway, moving on from that. Um, y'all know y'all gonna get the video regardless. If you don't get it that night, you're gonna get it the next day, okay? But Love and Hip Hop New York Season 9 Episode 5, Gwyneth and Luzas, okay? So we start off with Sin Santana at her house with her two sisters and, you know, they playing with the baby. They having conversations about when you gonna get that ring because the little sister, she 22 years old, been with her man for four years. He didn't gave her, uh, um, you know, promise ring and all that stuff. I said, okay, I mean a promise ring, but it ain't an engagement ring. But okay, whatever, you know, a ring is a ring in this case, I guess. And... She basically want to know when she going to get her ring. Joe is in his feelings because he feels as though Sin can't clean her shit up. Okay? I got to go up behind this girl and clean her stuff up. These girls and all they shit. God damn. You know, he got the big industrial, you know, um, mop bucket and shit like that. I said, oh, so you trying to be real dramatic, Joe, huh? And then he come down there. She wanted hit her sisters to, you know, try to drop the when you're going to get married in the ring thing. And, you know, they telling her you need to go to K's and stuff like that. And he was like, no, nothing I want to get her. Ain't nothing up in no K's or whatever the fuck from her. Like, girl, please. Okay, that's some cheap shit. You know, I ain't trying to, if I'm going to go all out, I'm going to go all out. And when I'm ready to propose, I'm ready to propose. And we already know that congratulations are in order because he did recently propose to her at his last taping of his podcast. So congratulations to them. Moving on from that. Joe meets up with Safari and DJ Self, okay? And they talking about this whole thing that happened on the internet when this whole beef between Cardi and Nicki Minaj just blew the fuck up, okay? And that's when Safari got involved um, because DJ Self and, you know, Joe was just saying, I thought I told you to lay low. I thought that you would have learned the last time that you did all this stuff to stay off the internet, to not be wilding out. And he was like, see, what had happened was, you know, Self got on the radio, said something about Cardi having the best album, and then Nicki got in her feelings. To be quite honest, I understand that, but, you know, from looking from my perspective and a regular person perspective who's not a uh, um, stand and all that stuff, who gives a fuck if somebody said you got, somebody else got the best album? As long as you know that you put out the best work that you could, who gives a shit okay and a motherfucker like dj self like who gon' girl anyway i was looking at that whole thing like when it's the first part i said nikki it's dj self who gives a shit okay it's anyway and so she started coming at him she started coming at his whole roster then she went on an interview started coming at safari safari had to clap back and all this stuff and he was like you clap back you made a whole career joe said but you ain't me and he said but at the beginning you know it didn't give me the prosperity that you think it got me. It made me lose. It blackballed me, which it did. It made me lose um, sponsorship, lose money and all this stuff. And Safari is in, in, in a confessional saying, what is he talking about? Because his podcast was known for clapping back. When he clapped back at the Migos, that's what made him, um, you know, get so hyped and, 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 and so popular. But what he's referring to, I feel as though what Joe is referring to is when he started clapping back before he had a platform platform like he does now, okay? Because back in the, jack, in the day, Joe used to be reckless as shit, and he did get blackballed, okay? Didn't nobody want to hear his music. Didn't nobody want to hear, you know, and he tried to put stuff out. It didn't sell or whatever, and that's how he got that moniker back in the day of the old, angry, bitter-ass man, and that's why I couldn't stand his ass. But the podcast came along and showed a different side, and, and gave him a platform where he can do it on a better front, okay? And give his opinion that people actually wanted to listen to for some reason. And um, that Migos thing did kind of catapult him a little bit, but he was already doing the same thing. So I feel like what Safari said is right, but also what Joe said is right in the beginning of his career after he put out Pump It Up and all that other shit. 
it didn't work for him. He started losing stuff in that thing. But then time changed and it flipped and it started working for him in his favor. You know, shit happens like that. But like Joe said, you ain't built for shit like this, okay? And it was like, you got a little Mariah laying into it. Mariah didn't have to say shit either, okay? She just wanted to jump in just to jump in and say something, okay? That grown-ass man started this shit. He can defend himself, all right? Anyway, moving on from that. Um, And speaking of fucking Safari... Y'all know Safari and Erica Mina got engaged yesterday on Christmas Eve. My whole thing is congratulations to him, but um, I thought she was just with old boy a couple of months ago who had to get called the cops on for beating her ass allegedly, you know. And then you know um, they just now so this confirms that they're a couple. They never really truly confirmed that they were a couple, couple. But I remember when they was on Scare Famous and they was flirting with each other all that time. So I'm not really surprised that they're together. But the engagement just came real quick out of nowhere. Like, y'all ain't even been together for a whole six months that we know of. You know what I'm saying? But, okay, if that's what y'all want to do, Mona Scott has already secured the storyline. So, hey, it is what it is. Moving on from that, we got Kim Bellas in the um, you know, gym. She's working out. And Juju comes up there and she just tells her that, you know, Joelle's took a plea. Suffering a suck attack, she took a plea. And so at this point, they got into an argument. He won't admit that the drugs had something to do with it. And, you know, she was like, it's been so many times where you try to detox and this boy go to the hospital. I'm doing all this. You running me ragged for this and that. But you won't admit that you had a problem. And Juju was saying that maybe at that time you shouldn't have brought it up. No, I feel as though, bitch, this is a truth moment, okay? The truth of the matter is you had to take this goddamn plea because you was on fucking drugs and you was doing dumb shit. That's a truth moment. Ain't no time in this um instance. That sugar coating, let's talk about it at another time. That's out the window because that whole shit got you in jail, okay? You're in jail for 27 months, all right? So, whatever. And she said you need to make it up with your man. And I said... Okay, and then she said, again, yeah, at this point in time, if I keep on having the same old goddamn argument with a person, I ain't got time to keep on making up with this person, making up with this person. Let that bitch come to me, and then we'll sit down and talk about it. But other than that, I don't really need you in my life. Just because she going through shit, she ain't the only bitch that has a nigga that had a nigga up in jail. Um, bitch, Papoose had a bitch in jail. She can go talk to him. She cool with um Remy and all that stuff, so, eh. If she wants the relationship, she'll go out and do what she got to do. If not, I'm not even going to force that because I just don't like Andy. I really don't. <laughs> so, Mariah Lynn goes to meet up with Sin Santana and uh, Nia You know, she don't really know Sin like that outside of her big mouth baby father. Okay. And, you know, she know Nia. They kind of click. They had the same history, meaning they both used to work the pole back in the day. So, hey, it is what it is. She's saying, you know, life is being better for her, you know, because she got to get on her ground for real, for real, because she got a whole bunch of people depending on her. Both her sisters, plus her mama, plus her, um, what, niece, nephew, whoever it is, you know. It is just a lot of people. And I said, okay, girl. So they go sit down. She talking about the whole thing that happened with the Gwen and thing and self. And you don't come for my family and all this stuff. She came for my life because she did this. Bitch, I, I don't even think that Nikki really fucking knew who the fuck you were. But okay. And you just inserted yourself in that. And like I said, yeah, you want to stand up for your team. But that's a grown ass man. He could stand up for himself. He was handling himself well. Okay. You caused yourself to get attacked by these goddamn barbs and all this stuff. But, you know, that just shows that you don't give a fuck. So, okay, I can give you that on that side. You know, um, you cause unnecessary stress on yourself. Okay. But it is what it is. Um, I don't know what she thought she was going to accomplish with doing that. It just didn't work out the way that she wanted it to. And, you know, Sin talking about some she doing music herself. I said, girl, since when? Okay, you know, uh, she trying to get Joe to do some music and all that stuff. Joe putting up videos of her wigs and how messy it is and all that stuff. Then Nia goes into talking about how, you know, we all need to come together and... Um, she not really here for self because self is the type of person that will come to you and act like every time they see you it's all love, but he won't play your music and stuff like that. And Mariah was like, I mean, I guess I can see that. And I said, Mariah, you talking about some, 
Um, regardless of what happened, this man is the man that made my career to where uh, got me to where I am today. Where are you today, boo? Because your records don't be played on the radio, okay? We don't care about a Mariah Lynn at this point. Outside of Money Gun and Once Upon a Time I Was a Hoe, we don't care, okay? We really don't care. I'm sorry to say that you a nice girl. You seem like you a nice girl, but we just don't care. Um, you need to get a whole new team. That's what happened with Cardi. Cardi left self and that bitch blew up, okay? I ain't saying it's going to happen with you, but I'm saying it's a possibility that maybe you need to get another team and take you another direction and then get you where you need to go, okay? I'm just saying. Then it goes into talking about how, you know, people just misjudge her because she was one way back in the day and, you know, she did come off a little aggressive and people don't see who she is now and how she was in a club and, you know, um, she got 36 stitches from the back of her neck all the way down to her chest because she um you know got jumped by these bitches eight bitches that she didn't know about and I was just like that's kind of fucked up if I'm you know people just jumping you for no reason it gotta be a reason to be quite honest but then again we live in a damn age people get attacked for no reason because people are just really crazy so uh, hating jealous or whatever but I don't I'm not too sure about that case with her but it's fucked up and she started crying and all that stuff and they were just saying we need to put shit out there and stick together and whoop de woo okay they had a traveling sisterhood moment you know um other hip-hop want to be sisters you know um moving on from that we get this whole scene with jonathan he's commemorating the uh anniversary of his father's death his father died when he was eight years old and his sister comes over and, you know, they go and they talk about what happened with the death and how he felt. His father was the one that was on his side. Okay. His father already knew that he was different and everything. And he just feels the type of way. And it felt like his daddy was his protector. And usually when stuff like, especially in the, I'm, I'm, I'm this is what I've seen, especially in the Latin culture, you know, um, that machismo type of shit niggas don't like it that their kids come out gay all right especially men don't want their boys to be gay but to see that he said that his father was on his side basically being his protector you know um that's a good look and um he was just saying how when his daddy coughing got lowered down into the ground he felt like his soul became empty and everything and um you know he's going through a lot these days and he's been numb and he don't want his father to disappoint his father because he knew if his father was here, he'd be disappointed in the fact that the stuff that he's going through, instead of just talking it out and getting help for it, he's numbing his pain with alcohol and anxiety pills, okay? And his sister's like, you got to get off them pills. He said, I haven't taken them and all this stuff. And I said, that's crazy. Everybody out here going through some shit. I can't even make no joke about that stuff because that's some real ass shit. Some of y'all ass is sitting here going through some shit now. It's Christmas. Ain't nobody get y'all nothing. Ain't nobody saying, you know, happy Christmas, Merry Christmas and all that shit, text or whatever. Y'all sitting in the house like this. Okay. You know. People going through shit. It ain't no joke. You know, just check up on everybody. That's all you need to do. So, send me up with Joe, you know, to talk about the video that Mariah showed her about her wigs and all that stuff that Joe put up. And basically, he's like, bitch, we need a goddamn nanny, okay? She like, don't talk to me like I'm a little kid, like I ain't got no other kid that I'm taking care of. It was like, bitch, you need to learn how to clean your shit up. I really don't care about that storyline right about now, okay? I mean, it could be real shit, but at this point, it feel like they picking their straws a little bit with Sin Santana. I like them as a couple right now, but their storyline is absolutely doing nothing for me, okay? Moving on from there, we get this phone call from Yandy. Um, he's, she's calling Mendeecee. Mendeecee's basically saying that Joel's called, her, called him and let him know um, what was going on with the whole jail thing and... Um, you know, she was like, that's fucked up because he's the sole provider for the family. And she, Mendeecee want them two, the Yandy and um Kimbella, to fix their issues. She was like, how can I fix something when she the one that made it public? She the one that publicly fucked up our friendship. I said, so you have absolutely nothing to do with this. Girl, Yandy, go somewhere. I just can't. I cannot with Yandy. I really can't because Yandy is the type of person that will not take full responsibility for her own actions. Okay. All the way around. You know, 360 up in this bitch. 
So, oh, my skin look good, though. Y'all, I haven't even washed my face yet, okay? I literally just woke up. I said, bitch, let me wake my ass up. Let me go ahead and do this review before they start chomping down on my ass. Like, bitch, what a goddamn video, bitch. You know we waiting for this fucking video, bitch. We ain't got shit else to do. We didn't open up our presents and everything already, bitch, okay? This is morning glow, okay? Even though it's the afternoon. This is morning glow, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And here I am, bailiff like a motherfucker. Bitch, girl, somebody come snatch my ass up. Come snatch my ass up. Anyway, moving on from that, let's get into this whole thing with Mariah Lynn. She got this little performance going on. <laughs> I made myself chuckle. <laughs> Let me stop playing with y'all. Okay. Um, She got this whole performance going on. We got Jaquay there. We got Safari send their self, of course. Um, Nile is there. Nile want to take it upon herself to talk to herself at this situation. Oh my God, we'll get to that in a second. But S Safari was just talking about how you know, regardless of what people try to say about um Mariah Lynn, Mariah Lynn has always been a homie to him. You know, they ain't really do nothing else, even though they almost fucked each other, kind of fucked each other, but didn't, but almost. You know, and she was like, he support her, she support him. He always at her show, she always at his show. Okay, that's cool, whatever. Um, but the elephant in the room at this function was the fact that Jaquay was there. Jaquay, he come over there like everything is all to the good. And Mariah Lennon was like, what happened? What happened? Put it out there. You know, let's clear this shit up. Did you set him up? Did not set him up. But did you say that this was an insurance scam when he got robbed? He was like, bro, I was there with you. And I didn't say that. And that was all that Safari needed to say. Okay, cool. I believe you. I was sitting here like... Okay, uh, to be quite honest, to be quite honest, I'm not even going to look like that because I'm actually glad that they didn't prolong this whole thing, okay? Because I'm like, we can't do this whole thing for another three, four episodes about them being mad over some fake shit. You know what I'm saying? Moving on from that, Nia Lee goes over there speaking to uh, Sam because Sam was over there. Uh, you know, she's in her feelings or whatever because Joe told her still that she ain't got um, the proper work ethic and shit like that, which she really don't. Um... So DJ Self come over there and Nile wanna have a conversation and um wanna bring up see this is the whole thing. There is a time and a place for certain conversations to happen, okay? And this wasn't the time nor the place because you knew that you was about to get in your feelings. You're in a club atmosphere, alcohol is flowing, and all this stuff. You want to be heard and you want to be taken seriously. But how am I gonna take you seriously when we're in this atmosphere and you're popping off the way that you're popping off? And Nia did have some points, okay? I'm not taking that from her, but like Sin said, this ain't the time nor the place to be doing this shit, okay? Um, you in your feelings because, you know, you said that you looked at Self like a brother, but he keep on playing you, not playing your music. And Self is like, since the fuck when you looked at me like a brother, bitch, you know, we ain't in the same circle like that. You don't, you don't allow me to be in your music world or whatever the fuck. And so at this point, she goes from, well, I did this with this person and I gave you music for this and you didn't even play it. And then you played me to the left and I got a daughter and I'm this and I'm that. And then you know what it is. These men in these industries, they be trying to silence women, but you ain't finna silence me no more. You ain't finna do this. So I did this for you. And I was just, I was just sitting here like, you got good points. Wrong time. You too emotional right now, okay? And who's really trying to listen to somebody that's that emotional at this point, you know? And I was just like, Naya, girl, this is why. This is why. So, Jonathan, he calls all the girls together, Yandy, Kimbella, Sin, Juju, but Kimbella's not there yet. And so, um, he just wanted to tell them all what's been going on and why he's been acting the way that he's been acting and blowing things up out of proportion. And, you know, he was saying for the past eight years, he's been taking anxiety pills and you're not supposed to mix alcohol with them pills. Let me tell you something. Y'all make me so nervous every time I see people who take their medication with alcohol, especially when they say that it don't supposed to be with alcohol. And they just, and when I look at movies and shit and stuff like that, I be like, no, you're not supposed to do that. Girl, don't do that around me. I'm too paranoid to do shit like that. Um, I I call my sister in a second. Like, so if I do this, would this happen? Like, what if I do this? Can I take this caffeine and then this? And girl, no, I'm too much of a paranoid uh, type of person to do some shit like that. But anyway, he was like, you know, and that caused me to do stuff that when I wake up and I think about the day, I was like, did I really do that? Did I really say that? And all that. And so Juju was like, so that's why you was tripping over this whole podcast thing. And at this point, you know, I don't give a fuck about no podcast. I'm just going to let that shit go. I got too much on my plate. You know, I don't want to lose my friendships and stuff like that. So that was cool that they made up over something that, you know, was bothering both of them. 
Um, then Kim Bella shows up and, you know, Kim Bella, he tried to apologize to Kim Bella because she was like, bitch, I got bigger stuff going on. And, you know, she said the only thing that she really was not here for was you trying to make it seem as if I was saying something about a friend that I would never say. Okay. And, you know, um, Juju was like, since we talking about trying to get back on friends and good turns, let's address the elephant in the room. The whole time ever since Kim Bella showed up, Yandy had this same face on her face. And I was like, girl, you ain't got the right to have that face, but okay. Um, you know, and here go Yandy. I can address, the elephant can address whatever it is that needs to be addressed. She don't need you to tell her what to do on your time and all this stuff. Me and Juju was like, wait a minute, bitch. Where, where, where all this attitude coming from? Now, Yandy did say she wanted to address Kimbella, but not at this time. I get that, but you ain't have to come with all that attitude or whatever. You making an environment hostile already. And so at this point, she said, I ain't trying to make it be no show or whatever. So Kimbella, can I come talk to you to the side? I was like go ahead Yandy go ahead the problem that I have with Yandy in this whole situation when she pulled her aside and said you gonna listen to me and I was with Kim Bella don't talk to me like I'm a um a little kid okay you know I'm I, okay I get that don't put your hands in my face then because I'm, I'm the same way don't don't do that shit because if I'm not doing it to you don't do it to me and then Kim Bella was like then do it then no bitch we're not gonna do that okay I get Yandy trying to have a grown conversation, but to tell somebody that that's not the reason why you're upset at me and, and listing this and this and this. No, you listing that because you feel guilty about that. Kim Bella never brought up the fact that you kind of backed away because you was tired of being in the middle of your friends arguing because you was friends with Jewels and you was friends with Kim Bella. She never brought that point up. She's literally upset and she told you what she was upset about because you got on fucking TV and you fucking lied and made it seem as if you did not tell that girl to come up there and try to fight you had some prob uh, or come up there whether you wanted her to fight her or whatever you told her to come up there and you tried to say that you didn't okay that's what it is and if she's telling you what the problem is address that shit own that shit and that's your problem you never want to own shit okay and Kimbella was like bitch don't offer me no fucking olive branch give me the whole fucking tree um that means that you have uh, uh, said that you acknowledge everything that you've done, okay? But Yandy, she just thinks she above shit. I just can't with Yandy. And at this point, Kim Bella is over it too. You know, she was like, bitch, it's too late. If you can't admit everything that you've done, it is what it is. And I understand where she's coming from, but I think both of them being petty to a certain extent. And it is what it is at this point. Um, You can't force stuff. You can't force it. So y'all tell me how y'all felt about this episode. It's not an episode coming on next week. It's an episode coming back on January 7th, which is my birthday. You know, so y'all want to cash app a bitch, okay, for the birthday um thing. You can cash app a bitch. It's um, money sign, ash shy, A-S-H. S-H-Y-87, bitch, okay? Y'all can do that shit if y'all want to. I ain't saying you got to, but I'm just saying some folks been generous. So, hey, it is what it is. And I hope y'all have a happy new year. If you don't see me for the rest of this week, whatever. Um, And I hope y'all enjoy your holiday today. Peace.